to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome it's football in. time, yeah! Hey, 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 hey. let's go! go. I'm hot. <laughs> I am so hyped. Woo-hoo. Welcome in the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Back with you, Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, manning the controls. Football, back with you. It's very exciting. It is wonderful, spectacular. Thursday, April 23rd, also known as Draft Day. Draft Day, yes. <laughs> draft Day. Draft Day in the NFL. Something we all need. No, not more than health. No, not more than water or food. <laughs> but third it's place close. isn't bad. It's close. <laughs> and um if if we've seen anything over the last week with this Bulls documentary, Breaking Records, we are all searching for some sports and some communal watching opportunities. And there is nothing better than the NFL draft. And for fantasy football players, the chips are going to fall tonight and through the weekend. And we're going to have an opportunity to dive into projections and rankings and, you know, figure out where our real rookie rankings are. And I can see on Jason's face uh, as he stands apparently in the draft room itself. I can't tell on YouTube here. Yeah, I've been in the draft room, but he is buzzing. You are buzzing. I am truly buzzing. I can't wait. You know, this these these times have me antsy. Have me, uh, you know. I used to love just staying at home and 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 doing nothing. Now I want something to do. I want fun adventures. Well, you know what? There's a fun adventure tonight. And the best part is we get to have so many answers to all these questions. So much insight. I mean, it's 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 like uh, you know, you you talk about the documentary that people are watching, sports documentaries. They're they're so fun. But now. Imagine that you are personally invested in a, a myriad of different ways, uh, whether it's just things you've said, and and not just analysts, but fans, just people. I like this guy. I don't like this guy. I hope he goes here. You know, it's uh, it's, it's exciting. I'm. We are beyond. writing the documentary. We're not watching it. We are living it. It's exactly. called Life. <laughs> Is this being filmed right now? <laughs> well, are we according on to Jason, according to Jason, everything he does is being filmed. Oh, watched. yeah, you believe you're in the Truman Show. I forgot about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, you know, you guys know the truth because you're <laughs> in on it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Everyone around you is building the lie. All yeah. right, we, we have a jam-packed show today. We're going to talk about the big Rob, Rob Gunkowski news. We're gonna, we got buy or sell on the show today. We've got our predictions for the landing spots of the big rookies, the big offensive weapons in this NFL draft. We're going to get into some mailbag before we do all of that, I want to remind you with the NFL Draft weekend oh, yes. here, we have a special prize pack in association with the Ultimate Draft Kit. So if you pre-order the Ultimate Draft Kit, which is the uh, award-winning, year-over-year, best tool you could possibly have to help you get an advantage in your upcoming fantasy football drafts, if you pre-order it by Sunday, you're also entered to win a listener league spot in our uh Annual Listener League, which is these are very coveted spots. My I, I will be. Oh, I was laughing because it sounded like you were saying you can win a Listener League spot to be in our Listener League. That's true, though. <laughs> it, it's not a lie. Yeah, allow it's myself accurate. to introduce myself. <laughs> uh, we're also giving away a video draft review, so we'll hop on a Zoom with a lucky winner and mm-hmm. break down their team after they draft. And help them out. And we're giving away a signed Julian Edelman jersey, a signed Devontae Adams mini helmet. And don't forget, we're giving away a listener league spot for the listener league. That is true. <laughs> well, and uh, honestly, it's the, then you're, you're pre-ordered. June 1st, when this thing launches, bingo, bango, you're, you're in immediately. You don't have to worry about it. And rookie rankings, dynasty rankings, you will get access to those things 
very, very, very soon. Yeah, we'll we'll put those up uh, shortly following the the NFL draft. Once that's concluded, we'll compile our stuff, get it up as quick as we can. Um, and yeah, so I mean, look, everyone's gonna get the ultimate draft kit. Do it now. Get yourself some good news with that uh, listener league opportunity to be a listener league spot in the listener yeah. league. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. <laughs> in ultimate the draft of kit. Ultimate draft dot com. <laughs> UltimateDraftKit.com. We're also doing an NFL Round 1 Reaction live stream. Oh, That's yes. tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, wherever you want. We'll be live for a while. With you. We want you to be there. So mark your calendars and get on and ask questions. And we'll answer them. Yeah, not just us talking to each other. That's boring. <laughs> we do that enough. <laughs> we do that enough. <laughs> Quick question of the day on today's show. Uh, yesterday, uh, we were just, I think, probably all walking around our houses doing very little, um, you know, probably hanging out with the kids. And yep. Breaking news. Oh, well, Ian Rappaport came out. He says Rob Gronkowski is, quote, interested in playing football again. Silly yeah. little rumor. Me I mean, too. I had the- I've had this guy on my dynasty roster for a year and a half just sitting there because I thought maybe someday, but the WWE came along and he lost all that weight. There's no way he's coming back. It's just it's, a, it's a fun little, rumor. What, what would a, happen? What, is, what does that look like? What if Gronk came back? It's a little bit of news. It's yeah. not going to happen. Breaking news. The Buccaneers have acquired tight end Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> wow. That was, that was quick. And a seventh round pick from the Patriots in exchange for a fourth round pick. So uh, that happened quickly. That's 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 crazy. It seemed like wow. Would would the Patriots actually work that deal in? Oh, breaking news! Oh, breaking news! I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Gronk I... is in Tampa filming <laughs> videos with Tom Brady about it already. <laughs> Uh, incredible work. Oh, and I gosh. did lose him in the Dynasty League. That's the other breaking news. <laughs> yes. How, yes. Like, okay. How does this happen? You are the Patriots. You have a player that doesn't play for your team. Like, he's doing nothing to help you. And then you turn him essentially into a fourth round pick in this year's draft. Like, how, why, is, why are these things happening for yeah, New I England? Don't, I don't agree with your sense of, uh, you're, you're always saying don't help the Patriots. I mean, yes, there is. A, there's a majority opinion, Mike, out there that the Patriots got fleece in that transaction. No, that's not what? majority. I know they didn't, they didn't yeah, have a player. They the turned, very nope. okay, maybe not majority, but the primary headline on ESPN yesterday afternoon was about the Patriots potentially getting fleece in that acquisition. I see it from both sides. It's great for the Buccaneers. It's great for the Patriots, and. It's now you have Brady. to ask the fantasy question of what does he have left? Our dynasty league, we have an off-season fab budget. If you're not familiar with that, if you're a new listener, that's a free agent acquisition budget, and it gives you the opportunity to bid on free agents so that people cannot just sign them willy-nilly. I saw a lot of people say they were just the quickest to the waiver wire, right? Sure. And, and snagged him. But if you have a fab budget league, you go and you make a bid, and the next morning the waivers run. We had several people bid their full one hundred dollar off season budget on Gronkowski. Al Borland ended up with the privilege of the having proud new owner of Rob Gronkowski, the Tampa Bay Buccaneer. But people want to know what's the real story here. Is Rob Gronkowski going to be a viable fantasy tight end? Is this transaction better for Tom Brady than it is for somebody who does have Rob Gronkowski? The last three seasons Gronkowski had in New England, twenty five receptions. 69 receptions, 47 receptions, three touchdowns, eight touchdowns, three touchdowns. Coming back after a long hiatus, down about 15 pounds. A little deflated. A little deflated. Goes well, to Tom a, Brady likes things deflated, so. Okay, Perfect. so he's, that's why he brought him back. <laughs> yeah. But Bruce Arians, you spent, we spent the last year and a half talking down tight ends in Tampa. Here comes a great blocking tight end in Rob Gronkowski. So... Where do you guys sit with Gronk and the implications? People want to know if their Godwin shares are safe. People want to know if Brady is now upgraded. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not too worried about uh, Godwin and Mike Evans taking a massive hit. 
you know, obviously the OJ Howard takes a massive hit, but there were enough targets going to tight end last year to where if those were to be funneled more towards Gronk, I don't, I don't think it's going to destroy um, the other pass catchers. When, when it look, when you look at Gronk, the real question that we're trying to answer is whether or not he is healthy NFL ready. You know, he wasn't healthy the last couple of years. Now he's older. It is my opinion that he should come in at, at full strength, full Gronkian strength, because we've seen a couple times where guys have taken, you know, a year or, you know, a year and a half or two years off and they've come back and they've, they've looked fresh. They've looked good. You know, whether that was like Ricky Williams or, um, you, you know, and, and so I think Gronk will come back healthy, but this still is the issue that we've talked about for years of, of Bruce Arians. This isn't, this isn't the old Patriots system. I don't think Brady's just going to come in and completely say, okay, Bruce Arians now offensive-minded head coach. You sit over there. I'm running the show, in which case a healthy Gronk. You you brought it up, Andy. That's so good for the running game. He's a very good blocker, um, and I think it's great for Brady. Gronk should be uh, a tight end one, but I mean, that, we've talked about that before. Yeah, that's that's what I want to say is he's a tight end one. I, I can't imagine when, when the projections come out that he's not a tight end one, but is he a top five tight end? That's that's the far bigger question because tight end one, uh, you know who was a tight end one last year? Jason Witten. <laughs> exactly. Was he really? Yes. And he was number 12. Mike Kosicki, he was snuck in there at the end. Like being at the back of the tight end one final rankings is not a huge tough, deal. A uh, tall like, task. It, well, it, like these guys, these aren't guys who have helped you on a weekly basis. And I can't, I can't fathom that Gronk will be coming back and be a top five guy. I'm, I'm of the narrative. He helps Brady. He helps the Buccaneers. The, the Super Bowl favorite things. That's getting out of hand. That oh Super Bowl favorite. Go have you have you not seen the what's happening to the lines of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? No, it's it's absolutely outrageous, man. People are, people are going all in. I will if you follow the logic train when we talked about Godwin and we talked about Evans mm -hmm. and Jameis Winston leaving and the pass attempts. Right, this team was throwing the ball so much they were down. Winston had to come back in games. These are things that we're not projecting onto Tom Brady necessarily. One of the big storylines, I remember Jason saying it, is what you lack in volume, you might make up in efficiency with players like Godwin and Evans. That would be my only concern if, the, if Gronk steals six, seven touchdowns from Brady and Brady throws 29, 30 touchdowns, there should be enough to go around. But at the same time, it is an interesting thing when Godwin was so, he was just so heavily involved last year you wonder if Gronk represents a little bit of a target share decrease for him. Because look, they threw it to Howard, but at, you know, Bruce Arians might as well might as well have put his hands up and said, "Please don't," for the duration <laughs> right. of the year. And uh, so it'll be very. I mean, this is fun for football. Yes, it, the fo football is way better when Gronk is around. But this this is the ultimate battle of narratives. Where last year it worked out. If if you were on the side that Bruce Aaron's system doesn't use the tight end, it worked. Then you had then you just had Tom Brady coming down, who has had a Hall of Fame tight end in his career, and it was, oh, there's hope. We've we, let's rekindle those flames of hope for OJ Howard. Then you, you had to balance that. Okay, well the system it's still OJ Howard, and now there's a whole extra amount of gasoline on that fire. Which side comes out on top? By the way, to speak to your point earlier, Mike. Tampa Bay, after the transaction for Gronkowski, became a top four team in the eyes of Bet MGM odds makers of winning the See? Super Bowl. Yeah. They went to nine to one odds. Ba blam. Wow. <laughs> so the power of Brady, the power of Gronk, that tandem. I know that we're all hoping a season happens. I think we're all uh, you know, willing to admit that it's not a guarantee. But there's not a team that needs it to happen more than the elderly Brady-led Buccaneers and Gronkowski. Sure. Yeah, maybe the Saints. The, 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 yeah, the Saints are in that category too, no like doubt. Our quarterbacks. And the Colts as well. <laughs> we, we've got a short window here, everybody. Yeah, Phillip Rivers is hoping for a season. We all are. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or sell, presented by Pristine Auction.
All right, buy or sell presented by our friends at pristineauction.com. Here's what we're buying or selling today. The Jets, will they take a wide receiver at pick 11 of the NFL draft on Thursday night? Right now, they only have Brashad Perryman, Jamison Crowder, uh, Quincy Ooh. Inunua, who is forever banged oh, up, and then yeah. Josh Doxson was signed this offseason. So spot 11 in the draft is very interesting. And Mike, I know you and I, there's a little spoiler alert, but we're both saying, yeah, yeah, they're going to take a wide receiver at 11. Yeah. I, I, I thought for a second though, like, is this a trap for us? Because we're saying that the Jets <laughs> have to be at pick 11. Is this, is this part of True. the trap? Or are we True. just saying they're going to take a wide receiver in the first round? It doesn't really matter. Yes. The, the answer is yes. The New York Jets are going to take a wide receiver in the first round. There are three uh potentially four guys that i see are like they're locked into the first round because that's the amount of talent we have at the wide receiver position this year just to and name the, them judy lamb rugs and you're saying yeah. what Rager? yeah like yeah that's why I've, i'm i'm hesitant on the four but it's like it's guaranteed that three I, wide receivers to me three wide receivers are going in the top 20 i i, I think four is guaranteed but the fourth is very much not guaranteed i mean it yeah, could right could be like five different guys could <laughs> sneak could up. Be could Jefferson. Be H- Higgins has been projected. Higgins, Jefferson, well, so. for sure. A lot of different. But yeah, so I've I, I got the Jets. Said, I've got it locked. The Jets are going to take, they have to take somebody. They, you can't have another year of Sam Darnold where your your biggest weapon is Jamison Crowder. Like it's, you, you got to move forward. Your smallest weapon is Jamison Crowder. <laughs> like, And I, I think Crowder's good, but this is just, you you're getting to the point of Sam Darnold's career where now it's okay. Excuses after excuses. This is what happened this year. This is what happened last year. And then he's sick. Like you have to, and then, he's, then he doesn't have the weapons. Equip him with a, a wide receiver of note. Find out if Sam Darnold can get the job done. And I, I'm going to sell this. I do not think the Jets will take a wide receiver at pick 11. Um, they they do need to get Darnold some help and that whole offense some help. But I think that that will come in the form of an offensive lineman um, to to protect, to help open things up for uh, Lev Bell. And if you go back and look at Adam Gase's uh, recent history, you know, obviously he's not necessarily the GM, but he tends to get the GM fired and have a lot of control there. Um, and, you know, he he's defense in the first round or a tackle in the first round. So I don't think they're going to go after a wide receiver. They let Robbie Anderson go. And, and of course, when you've got, when you've got Adam Gase, I think he thinks he can, he, he's, he can make magic. He believes in his system. I mean, Rashad Perryman is going to be a superstar now. (laughs) That's, that could be true. But if a top tier wide receiver, Mike and I both have Jerry Judy going there. If they land there, is that a situation where you are cringing? Or is that an opportunity because of Sam Darnold and the fact that there isn't an alpha wide receiver in in New York? I mean, that should be a reason to potentially like that destination. Yeah, it's it. There's you will cringe when it happens. It's gonna suck. But this is a this is a where you just you believe in the talent of Jerry Judy. Like when when AJ Green was drafted. Like I guess theoretically, he, what's that? Did you mean? AJ. When a, no, when, when AJ Green was drafted, like I guess, and he had Carson Palmer there, but it turned into Andy Dalton, and it was like that's not a situation you could have just gone all in on. And but you believed in the talent of AJ Green, you believed in the draft capital. That's the situation you're going to have to go with with Judy. It, it okay. So let me just for to continue the conversation, Judy to the Jets or Judy to the Broncos. Where where are you happier? Just to Oof. me, it's the Jets. Yeah, I, I would say the Jets. You've you've got a higher prospect in Donald at quarterback, um, and you have a lack of a true wide receiver one. So you've got a path to emerge as the alpha. Um, whereas it's more difficult if you've got Cortland Sutton on the other side of the field. Where is he more likely to get mono? <laughs> Definitely with Donald. Uh, I mean, Donald has been a known carrier, um, and so and probably a known giver. Okay. We- <laughs> oh, no. Oh, He's no. very loving. He's a loving man. He gives uh, kisses. Yeah, I mean, and Jerry Judy's a great wide receiver, so it's yes. expected that he'd get a smooch. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that was buy or sell from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. I want to thank today's sponsors of the podcast, keeping the show going before we jump into our predictions. And that means thanking great friends of the show. You've heard me talk about them. Shady Rays. Mm. Shady Rays, the independent sunglasses company that does not overcharge like the big corporations. I'm going to tell you a little story. Before Shady Rays sponsored this podcast, I was looking for sunglasses. Why was I looking for sunglasses? I wanted sunglasses that didn't suck. That True. But but I didn't want to spend a million dollars because I lose my sunglasses. That's just... I sit on them or I lose them. You do. It happens all the time. Is, yeah, it's a fact. <laughs> so I found Shady Rays <laughs> because they have the best warranty. Genuinely, that's why I tried them out to begin with. They'll replace your shades if they're lost or broken for any reason. Doesn't matter what happened. You could drop them in the ocean, which Jason, I saw. I've them. done that. <laughs> I saw you do that. <laughs> We've I all also, been there. I also saw that happen to Judge, to Judge Giamatti yes. when a wave hit him in the face like <laughs> Brian Urlacher. But uh, they'll replace your your Shady Rays for you, and they are very high-quality sunglasses. I've used them for years. Um, I, I've got multiple pairs that I've bought, different styles, and exclusively for our listeners, they give the very best deal that they have to offer. Uh, this is a Black Friday-level deal. Just use the code FANTASY, okay? Use the code FANTASY. You get 50% off two or more pairs. So you just put two pairs in the cart, use the code FANTASY, bingo, bingo, buy one, get one free. You get two pairs of shades for $48, redeem only at ShadyRays.com. Use that code FANTASY, uh, and you can find all their newest and best shades. And Foot Clan, if you are staying at home, there has never been a better time to stock up on Omaha Steaks. You're getting the world's best steaks, a huge variety of family favorites, and you don't have to leave the home. It comes right to you, and you can stock up, you can save up. Right now, they've got their Omaha Steaks stock up boxes which also make a great uh, care gift package. If you want to take care of some family members, you know, send a box their way. Make sure send a box of meat. Someone you love has a full <laughs> freezer. You know, Omaha Steaks, they deliver guaranteed quality and safety with every order. So as you're stocking up on things you need, don't forget the food that you're actually going to love. Steaks, chicken, pork, burgers, Franks. Right now, oh. Omaha Steaks, limited time stock up sales available to the Foot Clan to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to Omaha Steaks.com and type footballers into the search bar and you can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on all orders of $69 or more. They're nice. nice. Omaha Steaks is partnering with Feeding America to help families in need as well. They've already donated 100,000 servings of premium proteins. And when you buy select combo packages, they'll donate more. So be sure to visit OmahaSteaks.com and type footballers in the search bar and help support Feeding America. All right, you guys ready for some predictions? Let's go. I want to play the game. You know what? I just thought about what we need to put on the line for this. Oh, oh no. No, I don't want to hear this. No, no, no. You're going to like it. You're going to like it. Um, we Every year we do our draft predictions. Every year I'm obviously the best, and then there's you two, and you fight for second and third and whatever the case. But. We should we should do a situation here where the winner, the other two, they gotta send them some meat, okay? Mm, <laughs> the other I two like gotta <laughs> the other two gotta go in on and send the winner of these right. draft predictions a box of meat. I am right? fine. All I about accept. I would love to have two boxes of meat. Please <laughs> consult with me for my specific order. All right, I don't know if this pick in particular is going to be the difference maker <laughs> for our head-to-head-to-head draft predictions. Uh, We all got Joe Burrow going to the Bengals. Yeah. Can we stop talking about that now? Yeah. Well, I mean, there's there's the smoke. There was a little bit of a smoke of that Joe Burrow says he will not play in Cincinnati. I think it's done. The Bengals even, like, it was leaking out that the, the pick is done. It's happening. Burrow to the Bengals. The question for you guys is that I have, super flex rookie picks. We've all become enamored with Joe Burrow after we watched. We did our version of video scouting. Are you taking Burrow with the 101? Are you that confident he is a franchise quarterback? 
I am very confident in Joe Burrow. It depends on where the other, in in my estimation, four big names go. Two running backs, two wide receivers. Um, if they go to good landing spots, then I would look at Joe Burrow with the fifth pick. But he's in that conversation okay. um, in those top five. All right, let's talk about predictions for Tua Tungavailoa. I've got him going to the Chargers. I've seen the Chargers faithful out there. They are optimistic. They are hopeful. They would like to see Tua sporting one of those six new uniform variants that they chose to release. <laughs> why, why is there so many? I don't it's understand what their new uniform is. They have their six new uniform new uniforms. is a wardrobe. <laughs> this hat, like every quarter, they're doing a. a they're they're changing costume. This change. is like yeah, Jason with change. his socks plan and underwear <laughs> oh. plan, where it's a new pair every day. Just throw they'll it away. A, they'll do a new variant, uh, which is interesting because the Patriots came out with some modified jerseys, and there's just it's uh, two two jerseys. But Tua, where do you have him going, Jason? I have him dropping a little bit in the draft. Um, That's a lot of bit. Yeah. Are you, so no. are you? Because you okay? Give your team, and then we'll talk about it. So I, I've got him going to the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, I think he'd be a great fit there. I don't think that the Raiders would let him get past that spot. Do you th um, so do you think he drops to 12, or is this, this you're is projecting a drop, the Raiders this, go get him? This is a drop to 12, which seems crazy and outlandish. I mean, there's it all does. this talk about trading up from 5 to 3 to get uh, to a presumably. But every single year, there is... You know, I mean, Rosen dropping. Oh, when's he going to go? It's, you know, he, he's yeah, not I think gone at six, NFL not gone at seven, not right. gone at eight. Sure. And <laughs> and uh, and Haskins. Haskins dropping down to, I think, like 15 or something. Yeah, that's true. So I, Well, it's, it's possible that they, you know, you're making a prediction about the team. It's possible that if he gets past, if he falls past six, Los Angeles, the Chargers somehow. Right. Like, And, and that situation to me would be Miami not taking a quarterback and then the Chargers taking Herbert or something. But trading up to seven, Vegas has the capital to do it. They could trade up and get him. Sure. Um, so it's possible that, you know, Tua ends up there via trade as well. So, Mike, where do you have him? I have him going to the Chargers, and it, it kind of fits in with my pick of uh, Miami, where I have Herbert going to Miami, but I have Herbert going to Miami not with their first pick. Like that's, I think he will be the quarterback to slide. the The last that I have to seen, eighteen, yes, or we're not not necessarily to eighteen, but I'm saying Miami will not take him at five. They won't trade up to three to go get Herbert. If he's dropping into the teens, maybe then they move their their eighteenth pick up. But I believe that uh, I, I believe Miami doesn't take a quarterback with that first pick, leaving two of for the Chargers. I have to go into Herbert. I have him going. To Miami at five. I think they will take him there. Uh, the pressure to take advantage of the high draft capital spot when you need a quarterback, it's very intense. We saw the Daniel Jones acquisition last year or the pickup last year, surprising people. I think Herbert is going to end up in that Blaine Gabbert boat of Mitchell Trubisky boat. If, if, if you mm. need a quarterback, they're sitting there and the risk with Tua uh, might dissuade Miami away from him at five so I will go with Miami with Herbert I, I really like the idea of Herbert going to Miami at five but that would be at five in the second round um which is where he belongs at oh best. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry I just I don't think Justin Herbert's gonna make it but um I've got him going to the Chargers I've got him uh dropping a few spots staying right where the Chargers are at and and drafting him I know there was a team or two last year that said that Herbert was their number one prospect on the board um last season and so they were looking at uh, whether or not he was going to come out. I think that that could have been the Chargers. I, I assume it's either the Chargers or the Broncos. And I really wanted I really wanted to have him go to the Broncos just to bear up with John Elway. But uh, I don't think they'll do that to Locke. Andy, well, let me ask you this question. Cause, go ahead. Because you like Tua as well. I know that you, you stated that you ended up liking Burrow more. But let's I like say, Tua, yeah. Let's say Tua ends up at the Chargers surrounded by offensive weapons and Burrow – is in the Bengals. Is there any chance if you're in a super flex, you're taking Tua over Burrow? Is it possible? I think it would be really, it'd be a tough decision. It'd be really close. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think it could end up happening. What I was curious about is if one of these guys is on the board at nine, if Jacksonville's staring down 
Ah, uh, yeah, that's a good uh, question. I, you know, Tua at nine, what happens? But let's get into the running back predictions. We're gonna predict the landing spots of five running backs, starting with Jonathan Taylor. Jason, why don't you give your oh, prediction for yes, Jonathan Jason, Taylor? Yes, Jason, your prediction gives me a oh, yeah. Yeah, I get no, tingly. I, so I, I I I put this in early. I got I got my picks in early, and I this is like my dream spot for him. Um, I think he is perfect for the Seahawks role, and I put that in there, uh, researching what the uh, the Seahawks were, were looking at, what prospects, uh, local mock drafts, and they all had him taking a running back, you know, in the third or fourth round. But then, and and what what's upsetting? Did you see Mike the uh, all the going arounds of uh, Jonathan Taylor talking about the Seahawks? Is yes, his meeting with I Pete Carroll and all that. I was so upset when that came out because I had this I had this pick before then, and now I feel like it's going to be a a somewhat trendy guess. But to me, he's the the clear best running back in this draft class. Uh, he's not the Vegas odds-on favorite to be the first drafted. Uh, but I wanted to get him into the back of the first round. So I'm, I got the Seahawks grabbing a new Marshawn Lynch. If I'm not Taylor, sure I love that destination. Oh, my goodness. I love it so much that John, Jonathan Taylor is – he is that – he is the type of running back that Pete Carroll has just had massive success with. Success with. I mean, like – Chris Carson, it, like that's the type of runner that Jonathan Taylor is, where it's just absolute beat people up, and they they will give Jonathan Taylor two hundred and fifty plus carries. Well, the thing is, is it, it might not, it, it it very well might not be year one, uh, but Chris Carson's an uh, you know an unrestricted free agent in twenty twenty one. It is a little scary to speak to your point, Andy, of like. They just drafted a first round running back, and he didn't yeah. get the play over Chris Carson. So that could ha very well happen again. But Jonathan, it Taylor, would make to it me, murky a... for Taylor in rookie drafts, in my opinion. I know that you guys like the potential, but that's handing him the keys, and giving the keys yeah, to a that's, rookie that's fair. Would, would be a problem. Um, Mike, you and I yeah. once again. Apparently, we we have a lot of ties, Andy. There, do we? there. Yeah, there there will be a thin margin of error for for one of us to beat the other. Um, the meat margin. The, the, the meat small margin. meat margin that we need for... <laughs> yeah, yes, the meat margin. Well, we both have them going to Detroit. Carry on my wayward son. Because they need a running back. Oh. That, Big time. Oh, oh. oh. They do. That's rough. They do need one. I they know. need a running back. Mike agree. Mike says it's rough, but he's got him going to Detroit. Well, I, I have him going to Detroit, but I don't have such low blows going against my man carry on Johnson who I still think is a good running back but I agree that they they need somebody else and they carry on Johnson is a feel talented, like a team that a would talented do talented running back yes he is not how I qualify a good running back in the NFL those two things do not talent does not mean everything that's all I'm saying yeah so, he needs to be on the field yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah you're not is, good if you're on the sidelines Yep, unfortunately that's the case. So I think that they are they need to put themselves in a position where hey, carry on might be their guy. But you have to have somebody else waiting and it can't be Ty Johnson. So 35 to Detroit is where I have uh Jonathan Taylor. DeAndre Swift. DeAndre Swift. Ah, <sighs> this one brings me sadness. I not I'd be excited, Mike. What? I would really? be excited. Yes. DeAndre Swift to Miami. Mike and I both have picked Miami. So once again, yeah. the meat margin, no separation. No. But no, the patties are stuck. Miami is going to turn things around very, very quickly. You th and you really believe they will? Yes, I do. Yeah. And I saw some evidences of it even heading into the back half of With last Herbert. year. With uh, Herbert. <laughs> you have Herbert going there. They have a lot of draft picks, Mike. And DeAndre Swift is a very talented player, and they'd hand him the backfield. And that's what I want in that situation there. So I would be encouraged and excited about Swift to Miami compared to some other places where he might platoon. That would be my argument. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, for me, I, I'm I'm taking the Jaguars. I like this pick. I uh, like it. You know, I'm I in this scenario at you 20? could see Leonard for yeah, uh the Jacksonville Jaguars at 20 in the first round, trade Leonard Fournette, get compensation back. I think they they showed as a team that they want a running back who can be a pass catcher. And they gave Leonard Fournette a lot of I mean Com 100 compensation targets. alert. I just found out it will be a box of meat. <laughs> oh, there's yes. no way. You you are not getting a, a 
getting a prime package of Omaha meat for Leonard That's Fournette. True. That's true. But uh, yeah, yeah, you're I've, getting I've, those Tiger King leftovers. You're getting a pack of Oscar Mayer. This is one I, I hope I am wrong about selfishly. I want uh, Leonard Fournette to stay there in that same role for the sake of my dynasty team. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I've got I to guess go to the, I'm now rooting against that happening based going on your to dynasty the Jaguars. Team success. All right. So I like that pick, though. I think that that could happen because he could be gone. They could cut Fournette um, soon. Right. Maybe by the time that you listen to this podcast, they'll it's have possible. done it. Cam Akers. Cam Akers. It, this is one that pains me and my League of Record team, and it's keeper uh, running back Devin Singletary. But I think there's – I've gone back and forth to this, and Cam Akers to Buffalo, that's where I'm going. It would make me sad. I want Singletary to have that backfield to himself, but because of where Cam Akers, the draft capital might be, you know, 54 second-round pick Cam Akers, that could happen. Maybe. Could be later than that. Yeah. So uh, I'll go Buffalo with my prediction there. Mike, we finally diverge. Yeah, was, yes, we we have finally separated the stakes. And I completely agree that Jacksonville, there's there's far too much smoke going around with uh, them moving on from Leonard Fournette. If he's not traded, I think he will be cut. And Cam Akers would be great in Jacksonville. I think he would have tremendous fantasy value there and, and just – be good for their NFL football team, and you also won't have to spend, in my opinion, a f a first or second round pick on Cam Akers. I think you can get him in the third. Yeah, I, and I, I agree that he's going to be a, a around that third round uh, as far as a pick. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, I've said, you know, obviously, Andy and I have a water bet whether or not they draft a running back in the top three rounds. Um, I've got Cam Akers going to the Buccaneers as a receiver out of the backfield they have to get they have to get a better receiver for tom brady at running back uh agunba wale is not a good enough athletic enough running back to really succeed in the nfl and uh, you know rojo is deficient at receiving work so i think they need to get a guy in who they have maximum that. confidence in him jason maximum yes let all the other <laughs> nfl teams know that we have maximum confidence in our running back room. Um, yeah. So let so, me ask you this, Jason. So you get you have Swift to, to Jacksonville, Cam Akers to the Buccaneers. If that were to happen, oh, Swift would be way ahead. It's if still Swift, Swift. Okay. If Swift goes to the Jaguars in the first, and Cam Akers goes to the Buccaneers in the third, and they yeah, get rid of Leonard fair. Fournette, I mean, they're they're going all in on Swift there. Right. All right, let's look at uh, J.K. Dobbins. J.K. Dobbins, I'm going with the Chiefs, and that would make J.K. Dobbins a very – Oh, man. Whatever running back ends oh, up. Oh, man. Let, let me put it this way. Top three rounds. Mm -hmm. Any running back that goes to Kansas City. Hoo-ha. Are they going to be <laughs> any running back top three rounds? Are they a top three rookie pick? 100%. A top three? Oh, yes. It, the, the question just becomes, can they vault into the are 101? Are top one? <laughs> I yeah. That's that's where it's very tough. If they like, if they took Dobbins in the third round, meanwhile, Taylor's in the second, and DeAndre Swift is in the first, that would be that'd be tough. It would be a very very difficult decision for those people at one hundred and one. All right. So where do you guys have Dobbins ending up? I got. I'm, I agree with Jason that the Buccaneers want a pass catching and just well rounded running back, and I think that Dobbins is the man for the job. What was our uh, bet, Jason? Was it top two rounds? It was top it's two top rounds. Third, third round, third round, round push. push. Yes. yes. So um, all right, uh, I'll yeah. be shaking a little bit. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, to me, um, I, I, I this is almost like uh, where I where I hope he goes because I like J.K. Dobbins. Um, I think he would be great for the Steelers. Um, the Steelers right now, you could say whatever you want about James Conner. He's good when he's on the field. He's very. You know, we talk about Carryon Johnson being uh, more of a bust because even though he's been good when he's on the field, he's not on the field. Uh, I, James Conner has, at this point, almost proven that you have to have another guy there. And um, yeah, if if they were to go get J.K. Dobbins, that would be awesome. I would really like his long term prospects. All right, last running back prediction. Mike and I have this guy going to the Steelers, and that's Clyde Edwards Alaire. Oh man, I would love that. That sucks. Yeah, I, I, that's kind of why I put him there. <laughs> I don't know if I really think they do. I, the fact that they don't have a first and these these running backs that we're profiling right now, like they're 
people teams know that these guys are really good and you're going to have to go out and get them. It's tough to see Pittsburgh really spending that too on a running back. I know there's some smoke around the local media talking about that they are almost guaranteeing that, that Pittsburgh will take a, a, a high draft capital running back, but it's it it's tough to see. But if, if they're going to grab one, I think it would be a guy like Clyde. And I've got him going to the Rams. Uh, oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And I would hate that situation. <laughs> All right, wide receiver predictions. We've got five guys we carved out here. Mike, seriously, why do we have the same picks? I, because we're both really smart. Well, let me ask you this. Whose picks were in first? Huh? I, think Mike, I think Mike pretty much probably beat me. Oh. Yeah. But uh, if the copycat wins, <laughs> that'd be a sad day. Jerry Judy, we both have him going to the Jets. We talked about it with the quick question to the Jets at 11. Jason, you have Jerry Judy going too? I've got him going to the Jaguars. Jaguars uh, are loading up on skill players, I was going to say they apparently. got everybody. Yes, 100%. <laughs> I, th I think that they want to prove that they've got the right quarterback on a cheap contract, and they're going to go. I think they go offense early in this draft, and um, yeah, Jerry Judy, first round. They've, they've got three picks here in the first two rounds. They've got they a lot of ammo. CD Lamb, Mike and I have him going to the Raiders. Well, because he was, because Judy's taken by the Jets. Like I have, uh, the one thing where it's like it will shock me the most is if the Jets and Raiders don't take a wide receiver with that first pick. Uh, yeah, for me, I've got the saddest pick, the pick that I would be so just upset with i've got cd lamb my number one wide receiver going to the 49ers make you upset as a cardinals fan for nfl or would that make you upset for fantasy purposes or it, both it would make me more upset as a cardinals fan because i think uh cd lamb is awesome and i would like him to not go to the 49ers from a fantasy standpoint um it, it's it's a pretty good landing spot i think when it comes to competence on the offense i love pairing with kyle shanahan whatever you think of uh you know garoppolo you still got a, a good offensive mind and you've got to compete with debo but i mean cd lamb is is a, is awesome well they're very th those would be pretty complimentary guys just you hope there's sure. enough passes to go around yeah so you like 476 attempts no i, mean, I don't and i don't like I that don't. average depth of target is six and a half yards for jimmy garoppolo <laughs> and the fact that he didn't throw he threw the ball deep over 20 yards the least of any quarterback in all of football so that would be that'd be tough yeah henry ruggs the third i've got him to the eagles at 21 the eagles mm. have to add a skill player in this yes. draft i think it'll happen in the first round I Unless completely agree with that. Up. Philadelphia will be adding someone. I'm just it would it that would be a surprise to me if Ruggs made it all the way to 21. Yeah. Is that where the Eagles are? Like they're at 21. Yes. I don't think you're you're way off base with Ruggs to the Eagles. I think they would have to make a move. They up, could go to which, 18, 17, something like the, that. The, the the rumor mill has been going off about the Eagles moving up to go get somebody. Uh, but I have them going to the Broncos. I I think that they similar to what Jason was talking about with Jacksonville. They're going in on their guy, Drew Locke, and you surround him with with that speedster and Cortland Sutton. I mean, that's – and and your newly added Melvin Gordon. Like, that's that's a now a very potent offense. Breaking news. Ooh. What Please be got? about Gronk. Trey Burton got? has agreed to terms with the Indianapolis Colts. Ooh, that's an interesting spot. Reuniting Reunited. with Brayton, right? Yeah. Very interesting. Wow. Hey, uh, Al Borland, are you there? Who did you drop? Oh, no. Uh, for, I was hoping you wouldn't Gronk. have seen it. <laughs> yeah, I just put that in Slack. Yeah, I dropped Trey Burton. Oh, uh, fantastic. You spent 100 fab. Yeah, how much fab are you going to spend on picking him back up? <laughs> I don't think he's healthy. He might not be. I mean, he's not he's good. Healthy he enough hasn't to, been good. He passed a physical. I right, that, if he got signed. Yeah, he did. Yeah. I mean, he's he's been signed by the Colts. I don't think that this is, just to break it down for a brief moment in time, uh, I don't think anybody would expect fantasy value out of Trey Burton. Not, but it's not more expected. Comedic, comedic value, yes. Yeah. Not not expected, but also wouldn't be surprising. He could he could hurt uh, baby hands, Jack Doyle, a little bit. Yes. He could. Yep. Just siphoning some targets and some touchdowns. Also, no away. one can hurt Gigantor. He's invincible. That is true. He uh, guarantees his own three touchdowns. Mo Alley Cox every year. is is you can't harm him. 
Yeah, uh, they lost Ebron. They added Trey Burton, reunite. Uh, at least you have a coach that knows how to use them. So, Jason, I know that you still need to give me your Henry Ruggs the third destination. Henry Ruggs the third. I've I've got the Las Vegas Raiders drafting Alabama's offense in the first round after Tua drops to them at uh, what is it twelve? Then at nineteen, oh. they take Henry Ruggs and open that offense up. Las Col- Vegas fans would be very appreciative of that if they take him at nineteen. That'll be pulling the rugs right out of the Eagles. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, very under, nice. Not that good. All right, Jalen Rager. I've got him going to the Broncos, so we all agree the Broncos want to add a skill position player. Yep. I just think it ends up being him. Jason, you've got him going to the Ravens. Yeah, I, I like the Ravens adding one more piece for Lamar Jackson. I'm, I'm a, a Rager fan. I think that would uh, be an exciting offense. By the way, Al has shared that Trey Burton was cut with a failed physical designation. So hmm. interesting. When he said he's not healthy, that would be why. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. I have Rager going to the Packers. I think they need to add some toughness, and Rager can do that. Okay, and then Justin Jefferson will throw him in there as well. I think the Vikings are candidates to add yeah, a, be later, a solid spot, later wide receiver situation, and Justin Jefferson could end up being that guy. So I'm going to go with the. Minnesota Vikings. Yeah, we've all like you know Justin Jefferson hasn't necessarily been our most you know our our, our I love favorite. Him. I, I, think I like really, him a lot. Really I think we I think we all like him. He's he's uh you know decently polished for what he's going to be in the NFL. Uh, but I love all three of our spots for fantasy as as a really successful two. Um, but I've got him go to the Packers. Uh, Mike, I, I think everyone sees the Packers needing to yeah. add a pass catcher, and uh, he'd be a good one. Yep, and I got Philly going in because they missed out on those uh, first three guys. And as soon as this show's over, guys, I'll, I'll just send you my address as a reminder so you can address the box of meat. For the meat? Mm. As soon as this draft is over so you guys are up to I, speed. And I will I want start it quickly, okay? clearing I want it out very my... Quickly. I'll start clearing out my freezer. <laughs> by, by eating... <laughs> by eating meat. all the meat in it already. <laughs> are we good to get into some mailbag before we close this thing out? Uh, uh, yeah, I just want to throw out, like, I have a couple running backs that we didn't mention on yesterday's show that are interesting to me because I think they have upside if they land in the in the right location. The first one is A.J. Dillon, who is just a tank and uh, looks, I mean, like, he has a lot of similarities going on to Derrick Henry. They don't look like the same player necessarily on the field, but size-wise, production-wise, uh, he... If he goes to the right spot, like Seattle, A.J. Dillon could really succeed there. And then Anthony McFarland out of Maryland, he – I don't know how high he could possibly get drafted, but if you want to have a really good time, go watch <laughs> McFarland highlights. Like, this dude is absolutely out of control. Yeah, those are those are two great names. Uh, since it's the prediction show, I just really hope that Jalen Hurts finds his way to the pack, or the Patriots. The Patriots. I just, I just want it to happen. It really will be bad. interesting to see if somebody – you just it just takes one team. Yes, and that's you know? all I want. I just want one it's, team to invest. Yeah, they, back they, of the first. That's I how want, Tebow ended up in the first round. Just takes one team. Yeah, exactly. All right, here we go. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, it's the draft. <laughs> all right. If you have a question, we're here to help. Head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button, or you can dial our voicemail hotline three zero two four six four T F F B. All right. This question comes in from Lathan on Twitter. He says, what what would be the more impactful draft pick for the Cardinals, an O-lineman or an additional top-tier wide receiver? Oh, that's a great question. The I more mean, impactful draft pick. It, it's really up for debate because you've had, with Kyler Murray specifically, and some of these more mobile quarterbacks, we've seen success with offensive lines that aren't built out around them. Jason, yeah, you were I, starting to say something. No, I, I I think that the honest truth is it's going to be whichever one hits. Like if if you could tell me that you're going to get a great O lineman or a the great the truth is the whatever one no, hits. No, no, no. Yeah, let, which, let whichever one is my, actually a good player. Let me finish my thought. <laughs> if you got an O lineman that was great and a wide receiver that was great, I think the O line would be more impactful. But the history of Kime drafting offensive linemen, and getting the wrong guy, Not or good. or you know this this environment, you know our our draft pick history isn't that great the best success is like dj humphreys who is pronounced okay. with an umphreys pronounced mm. with a okay um you know i mean <laughs> he's, okay he got paid freeze. he got paid with an umphreys but um <laughs> i'm really confident in cd lamb i just don't see him failing so if they were to take him 
I'm guessing he would be more impactful than whoever the Cardinals guess at for what is a uh, rather deep and talented offensive lineman draft. But you could see opinion. Christian Kirk traded tonight as well. I mean, there are rumors Possible. about Christian Kirk leaving town, and that would obviously open up uh, some of that depth chart for an addition, even if it's not a number eight. Question from Nathan. So we had a Lathan oh. and now a Nathan. Ooh, I can't oh, wait I can't for what's wait next. For Schmathan. Yes. Uh, if the Charger, if the Chargers don't draft a quarterback, would Tyrod be a top fifteen player in twenty twenty? Hmm. A top fifteen quarterback. He, he didn't make he the probably. top twenty on last week's show. Well, because none of us project Tyrod to be a sixteen game starter. Correct. If, but if he was probably I, I think he, you would have to say probably he would because the the rushing yardage is so uh, heavily weighed in fantasy for quarterbacks and then you've got good receivers so I mean he, he'll be right near that spot for sure to me if if you knew he was going to play 16 but I don't, I don't see that happening all right Jeremy says if it, uh, if teams draft the way you think they should who mm. becomes an immediate Super Bowl or playoff contender does the addition of Jonathan Taylor make Seattle a Super Bowl contender any more than they are right now? Uh, uh, Chris no. Carson, Chris <laughs> Carson was already, <laughs> yeah, Chris Carson was already really great. I mean, uh, you don't know the health of him coming off of his injury. Um, Super Bowl contender if teams draft the way they should. I mean, you could you could very well see the Steelers get back into you know, assuming that the quarterback is healthy, playoffs, they have. Too. If they have a you know a, a solid draft here, which they're known to do, and Big Ben is healthy, I think they could be in contention. Indianapolis, quickly. if they yeah, because I was some... going to go with the Colts. Yeah. It feels kind of like cheating because they've upgraded the quarterback, the position that is hardest to upgrade. So they don't even <laughs> really have to draft that well to already be a better team this year. But <laughs> I'll exactly, go with them. That's exactly how I felt about the Steelers. I'm like, it's yeah. kind of a cheat. <laughs> because they're getting a, a quarterback back. Basically, who gets a quarterback that's great? And maybe maybe the Cardinals. Maybe uh, Kyler takes that year two leap like you saw with uh, Mahomes and Lamar Jackson. I don't want to be uh, the everlasting Eagles apologist year over year, but it's like... <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. But I'm going to do it anyway because they made great improvements. Darius Slay on defense, and if they added that big offensive weapon to the outside, that could really help Philadelphia. They still made the playoffs last year, 9-7. and seven. Despite the injuries, that that's a team that could use one more big time weapon. And I'll I'll say a team that could draft their way into being uh, a playoff team. Like I hate to say it, but it's Cleveland. I think that they are closer than they're given credit for. All right, this question comes uh, from Noah. It's very important, guys. I want you to Shmo listen closely. Schmathan. No, it's not Schmathan. It's, it's, oh. it's Noah. Oh, okay. In Hudsonville, Michigan. Very important question about oh. fantasy football with the spouse. He says, last year when I faced my wife in a matchup, I won <laughs> and I told her to, quote, get bodied. <laughs> she punched me in the throat. <laughs> how do you how do you handle playing fantasy football with your spouse? Just like you did, my man. I mean, the throat punch is key. You, Good for her. You take, it, you take that throat punch. You accept it. Sounds like my wife. My wife would absolutely <laughs> throat punch me. For the yeah, one one thousand and twelfth time, but you will have won. That's the so most important. You would thing. trade you a win away. for a throat punch uh, every time. Every if I was saying, "Hey, I'll let you punch me in the throat if I can win this week of fantasy," <laughs> you'd have a bruised throat. Yeah, and you'd be happy. All right, last question here from Jace. What do you think of this Percy Harvin news? Trying to make a comeback. Oh, oh Percy, your birth certificate betrays yeah. your your opportunity here. It it. It brings me sadness is what it brings because Percy Harvin, when healthy, like Percy Harvin was unbelievable, man. Like if, if when used correctly, like because he was he was one of those like strange hybrid players where I feel like coaches weren't exactly sure how to get the most out of him. But one of the best kick returners of all time, in my opinion, you know who just, he was, like, right? An absolute stud. He was the. Uh Mm. Of the wide receiver position. Every year, because of the talent, you couldn't help he came but craft through, though. Like, you he couldn't help a, but craft a delicious narrative. I think he had, he a top had one year. great year. Yes. And then and then he had other years where he was great on a per game basis. But carry on's gonna get his great years too. So they'll be uh, great. Not if Jonathan Taylor's there. That is that is true. <laughs> that is true. Please, Jonathan Taylor, go to the Seahawks. All right. One last reminder here. 
before uh, the NFL draft this evening and our live stream tomorrow. Please remember to get in on the Ultimate Draft Week promotion. We're doing the prize pack, a listener league spot opportunity, the video draft review giveaway, signed Julian Edelman jersey, signed Devontae Adams mini helmet. If you get the Ultimate Draft Kit before uh, or by the 26th, yes, okay, by. so that's by the end of the draft. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. You will get the you'll get entered, and you can do that at ultimatedraftkit.com. Learn more about the ultimate draft kit. Every year we are working very, very hard to improve the ultimate draft kit. The price has never changed, but the features have increased each and every year. I mean, Custom, the price should change, honestly. The price should change. What are we doing here? But <laughs> it hasn't. Because we're fools. But yes. ultimatedraftkit.com. Be sure to check it out. Enjoy this evening and the next handful of days. It's going to be a lot of fun, a very welcome distraction. And join us tomorrow, yes. 2 p.m. Pacific. We will be live on all of our socials reacting to the first round. Enjoy the football, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.